Hi, my name is Christy and welcome to my channel. I have been asked to talk about yoga for complete beginners. How can you get into yoga? And also I've been asked to talk about breathing while doing yoga. So first of all, before we begin, I want to say that yoga is much more than something you do on your mat. So it's not necessarily just the exercise or stretching, some people say. Um, that part of yoga is called yoga asana, so yoga poses. Um, and I will talk about that today. This will be the majority of what we will go through. I will also talk about pranayama, which is breath work, and it's also part of yoga. So we'll be covering two, pranayama and asana, out of eight if you wish, um, because some people might know there are eight limbs to yoga. Let's start with the breath. I think it's very important to connect with your breath, not only when you do yoga. Um, it's just very important to be mindful of your breathing. Pranayama is really great not only to um, help you become more aware of your breathing, but also to train your lungs to um, increase the capacity of your lungs and just to increase the capacity of your whole respiratory system. Um, it's great to calm your mind and relieve stress. You know, no wonder they say whenever you get stressed or worried, just take five deep breaths in and out, deep inhales, deep exhales. So pranayama works the same way. And actually there are so different types of pranayama. Today we won't be covering all of them. We'll be covering just um, two <laughs> out of, I don't know how many. So before we go into movement, can you just sit down on your mat or the ground, wherever you are, find comfortable seated position. It can be cross-legged position or you can have your legs straight in front of you. You can be kneeling as well. And bring your awareness, so your mind, to your sits bones. Push them down. So feel really grounded as you're sitting here. And now lengthen your spine. Lift it up as much as you can. So lift up through the crown of the head. Almost feel like your vertebrae are separating and lengthening, like you're creating space. Then roll the shoulders down the back so you can lift them, push them back and down and close your eyes if you want to. And now just become still. Continue breathing though. <laughs> But try to avoid any non-essential movement. And now observe your breath. Notice the depth of your breath. Are you breathing just kind of in your upper lungs? Or is your breath deeper? Notice how fast or slow it is. And now slowly, if you can, start lengthening your breath. So very simply, just inhaling through the nose. And when you fill your lungs completely, exhale through the nose. When your lungs are completely empty, again, inhale to fill them to the top. And exhale all the way out. Once you get fully comfortable with that, maybe you are from the beginning, then we will go into expanding more and more. So bring awareness to your breath as you breathe as you inhale, notice your lungs expanding, notice your lower belly expanding, really filling your body with that oxygen. And exhale all the way out. Another deep breath in. Maybe slowing your breathing down a little bit so there's no rush. Now, 
we will lift the right hand or you can do the left one if you're left-handed and place two piece fingers in between the eyebrows then we will open the thumb and the ring finger so the right thumb will close your right nostril or the left one the left if you're doing it with your left hand and then the ring finger the other nostril but first leave them both open take a deep breath in and deep breath out and now close the right nostril inhale just through the left just as we did before, but using just your left nostril. And exhale. Do this five times in total. Deep inhale. Deep exhale. Three more times. And then simply change sides. So open your right nostril, close the left one. Inhale through the right. Exhale through the right. Keep going five times in total. Whenever you finish, relax your hand back on your knee or on your lap or just outside the hips, wherever it was. And just be aware that we're all different. Our lung capacity is different. Our habits are different. So maybe you're breathing slower or faster than me. And that's completely fine. You don't need to follow me. Just follow yourself. And now let's move into our pranayama numero uno. Uh, so the first pranayama is called Anulam Vilam and it means alternate nostril breathing. So we'll be inhaling through one, then holding the breath, exhaling through another. Inhaling through that one, holding the breath, exhaling through another. Now, if you have any heart ailments or um, if you have high blood pressure, then don't retain your breath. So don't hold your breath. Instead of holding your breath with me, just skip it and go straight to exhaling and inhaling and exhaling and just move like that. If you can hold your breath, then hold your breath. So let's start the same way. Lift your two piece fingers, place them in between your eyebrows, open the thumb, open the ring finger. If you're doing it with your left, same thing. I'm definitely not really left-handed. I don't even know how it goes. So two piece fingers, then you'll be closing first your right nostril with your left ring finger, if you're using the left, or with your right thumb, if you're using your right hand. So now inhale through the left for one, two, three, four. Close the left nostril so both are closed and hold if you can for one, two, three, four, open the right, exhale for one, two, three, and four, inhale through the right for one, two, three, four, close and hold for one, two, three, Four. Open the left, exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale through the left for one, two, three, four. Close and hold, one, two, three, four. Open the right, exhale, one, two, three and four keep going like that so feel free to pause the video you could do eight or up to 15 rounds um you know just see where you feel comfortable to start with one round is 
inhaling, exhaling, inhaling, exhaling. Yeah, so pause the video if you want and do that and then resume. And now I am ready to move to the next pranayama which is called Ujjayi breath. And this is something that we very often use in yoga asana. So while moving, while you know you wouldn't be doing this while doing your downward facing dog, but you can definitely use Ujjayi breath while doing it. So for Ujjayi breath, your hands will be relaxed. You will be breathing just in and out through the nose. And imagine like you have a hole at the back of your throat and you're sucking the air in through that hole so you're not using the tip of your nose or your nostrils to inhale you're really using something deep inside your throat so when you breathe you almost create this ocean sound so ujjayi breath is also called ocean breath because you can almost hear the waves of the ocean it goes like this and exhale another tip to help you get the feel of the ujjayi breath you could simply imagine you have a glass or a mirror in front of your mouth right okay so let's start from the beginning lift your hand imagine it's a mirror or a glass place it in front of your mouth take a deep breath in through the nose open the mouth and try to fog the mirror <sighs> so you have the deep exhale you definitely know how to do it right um, now try the same with your mouth closed so you're fogging the mirror through your nose do this a couple of times and can you feel how it's coming from like deep inside your throat this is the sensation that you're looking for so once you get that then you can simply continue breathing without your mirror or your glass okay okay and now why don't we move to yoga asana so our movement alrighty so for our yoga asana bit uh, you might want to have if you have blocks um, that's great grab your blocks otherwise you could grab simply thick books and maybe several of them so you can stack one on top of another and create your you know on block <laughs> uh, but you don't necessarily need them so they can be helpful if you don't have them it's fine you can still do yoga um, of course and also uh, maybe a strap would be handy so it can be your bathrobe um, belt it can be your trouser belt um, any strap really if you have yoga belt yoga strap that's perfect as well I have three poses for you today and we'll do a short warm-up so maybe that will be a fourth one um, and uh, those three poses, the main ones that we'll be doing, all of them are from sun salutations. So sun salutation is a cycle of different poses and it is present in every traditional type of yoga. If you practice yoga, you know them. Um, if you don't practice yoga, but you'll go to a class, you'll get to know them. So um, these poses that I'll show you um, are very, very common and hopefully this will be helpful. Let's start with a warm-up and then we'll move into the poses. My favorite warm-up is from tabletop position. Tabletop position is um, on your knees, on your all fours, where you have your wrists underneath the shoulders, about shoulder distance apart, and then you have your hips above the knees, your knees hip distance apart. Why do I say it's my favorite? It's because you can do so much from this pose. So it's very important to warm up the wrists before you go in any yoga practice. You carry so much weight on your hands in yoga, whereas I believe not many of us carry our body weight on our hands just on daily basis so you don't want to hurt yourself or injure yourself and this is why I need to warm up your wrists to do that spread your fingers widely on the mat and then start moving so you could maybe shift your weight slightly forward and back and I'll be aware of your wrists so just notice what's happening in the wrists can you feel when you move your weight forward a deep stretch at the back of the wrists, the weight moving there. So just don't go too deep, be gentle, we're just warming up. So just moving back and forth. And then stop in the center. Now rotate your hands so you have your fingers facing the center of the mat. So fingers facing one another. Keep your elbows straight, start moving from one side to another. 
So here you just have a different different angle of that stretch. And then stop again, rotate the hand. So going outwards and towards the knees. Now, um, it depends a lot on your anatomy. Some people will be able to place the heels of their hands fully down on the mat, like I'm doing here. Some people might be somewhere here. So um, it doesn't matter where you are as long as you're feeling okay, because we're not looking to all look the same in yoga and all do the same thing. We're looking for what's good for us. So in this particular pose, I want to stretch the forearms and the wrists as well. So it doesn't matter if your heels are on the ground, the heels of your um, hands, I mean, are on the ground or if they're li lifted. If you're feeling a stretch, you're getting the benefit of the stretch. Does that make sense? So let's just stay here. Now, if your heels are on the ground, heels of your hands again, <laughs> um, and you don't feel any stretch or you don't feel anything really, you can slightly shift your weight back. So it's kind of you're sitting back on your heels. And then maybe come back, lifting up and then moving back. Be conscious when you move, so don't just move back and forth with no intention. Really notice what you're feeling and what's happening. Get to know your body. Good, then stop. Rotate your hands so the fingers are facing forward again. Now we will start moving the chest. So move your chest forward just as we did in the beginning. Now move it to the right side, move it back and to the left. Keep your elbows straight. So you're kind of drawing circles uh, with your chest. And maybe you're feeling it in your wrists again. I am. But also you're just adding more movement to your spine as you're sending your chest to the sides now and then change direction, go to the other side. And now we will increase the movement. So let's go forward as much as we can, to the right as much as we can, back as much as we can, maybe even sitting on the heels, to the left and forward, to the right and back. Keep your elbows as straight as you can so you're feeling it through the sides of the body, stretching the sides. And then come to stop in the center. Let's move to cat cows. So as you inhale, drop your belly button down, arching the back and lifting the tailbone so the very, very bottom of your spine up. Open the chest to the front. You can slightly bend the elbows, but don't flare them out. Tuck them in and lift the head. This is called cow pose. So you're kind of forming a cow with your body. Exhale, push your hands down round the back as much as you can. Look at your belly. So you're rounding your spine like an angry cat. Again, inhale to arch for a cow, maybe slightly bending the elbows and drawing them in, lifting the head, pushing your chest forward, dropping your belly down. Exhale to round. Inhale to lift the chest. Exhale to round. So maybe remember your Ujjayi breath now. Inhale through the back of your throat. Exhale all the way. You are the ocean. Good, let's come to neutral back. Straighten your right leg behind you. Have the toes on the ground. Have your hips square so you're not opening to the side. Both hips are still facing the same direction. And push your heel back like you want to touch it to the ground. So feeling it through the back of your right leg, your calf muscle, and then place the knee back down. Go to the left. So left um, knee lifts, the heel is pushing back. And then release back. Good job. So we added a little bit of movement into the body. And now we will go straight into the first pose. I believe it is the most difficult one. So good to start with, right? It's called Chaturanga or Staff Pose. And for that pose, we will start in Plank. So Plank looks like that. 
you have your hands on the ground fingers spread wide always and have a good grip with your mat so you can slightly bend your knuckles the mid knuckles in your fingers to lift them off the mat and have that good grip pressing down through each single base of your finger and then lift your knees have your body in one straight line so you're pushing back through the heels your shoulders are slightly um, in front of your wrists and your tailbone is stuck underneath you're squeezing your belly button up towards the spine so this is called posterior pelvis tilt when you have your belly button coming in and your tailbone moving underneath the body as opposed to anterior pelvis tilt where your top of the pelvis is coming forward and the bottom of the pelvis is moving back so posterior the top of the pelvis is moving back the bottom of the pelvis is moving forward anterior in plank you want to have posterior pelvis tilt you're pushing down through your hands now if this is a little bit too much for you you can lower your knees down however when you do that maintain your posterior pelvis tilt so you're not pushing your hips back arching your back tilting your pelvis anteriorly you want that posterior pelvis tilt and then maintain a straight line from your shoulders to your knees keeping your shoulders just a little bit in front of the wrists so this is a plank and this is where you get to chaturanga from from plank then shifting your weight forward so you're slightly rolling through your toes your shoulders come in front of your wrists bend the elbows keeping them by the sides of the body lower just halfway down that's your chaturanga so it can feel quite um, strong in your shoulders as well as your core so your lower back your abs it's very important that you maintain your body straight so you don't want to lift your hips you don't want to lower them down because after a while of this you will start feeling it in your lower back if it's quite difficult to maintain that lift that straight body you can use your props so if you have books or blocks place them underneath yourself so these will go underneath my thighs as I'm lowering down from plank and they will tell me where to stop so I will aim not to touch them with my thighs so taking a deep breath in at the top and exhale to chaturanga so my thighs are not dropping down I'm keeping my body in one straight line you could also have your blocks underneath your shoulders as you do that placing your hands just outside the blocks or your books taking a deep breath in exhaling down not touching the blocks now another very common um, issue with chaturanga is the elbows they tend to move outward sometimes you really want to keep them close to the body so essentially they're bent at 90 degree angle there's a little trick for that to kind of build muscle memory if you sit in any position maybe kneel maybe you can sit cross-legged doesn't matter at all you can even do the standing Extend your arms in front of you. As you exhale, bend the elbows and brush them to the sides of the body. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Now you can bend your hands at the wrist as well. It's almost like you're in plank, chaturanga. Inhale, exhale. Almost like building muscle memory here. So we're not doing this, we're doing that. Let's do this one more time. Inhale, exhale. Now, same happens if you're doing it from your knees. 
just keep your elbows by the sides of the body and keep your your uh, body from your shoulders to your hips to your knees in one straight line deep breath in exhale shoulders are moving forward elbows by the sides if you find your elbows are flaring out nothing helps in chaturanga you could use a strap a belt anything you have um, so I have a yoga belt here you want to tie it so you create a loop and that loop is just as wide as your shoulders so feel free to measure yourself okay I think somewhere here you will then use that loop and wrap it around your arms just above the elbows and this is how you will go to your chaturanga so this um, belt will help your elbows to stay shoulder width apart so the, your elbows will touch the sides of the body they won't flare, flare out come into your plank take a deep breath in exhale bend the elbows so maybe your chest will come onto the belt and you won't be able to go lower but that's fine in fact actually it gives even a little bit of support and you're done you will then lower the hips down roll the shoulders down the back squeeze your glutes and lift the chest slightly up look just in front of the mat feeling it in your lower back if you have more mobility here maybe you can lift the chest even higher maybe you can straighten your arms um, straighten your elbows however if when you do that your shoulders climb up the ears and you look like that don't do that because then you're just collapsing in your joints you're not really working your back muscles that much so we want to feel the back working here if you're lowering down from chaturanga with the knees lifted then we'll go to upward facing dog deep breath in exhale chaturanga inhale untuck the toes place the top of the feet down keep your thighs your knees lifted off the mat squeeze the glutes roll the shoulders down the back in both bhujangasana so cobra pose and adho mukha svanasana which is upward facing dog we want to have our chest moving forward so while your shoulders are rolling down the back your chest is moving forward like someone is pulling you and now the last pose we have is adho mukha svanasana downward facing dog definitely the most most common yoga pose so it starts on your hands as almost everything definitely everything today find that comfortable grip so fingers spread wide tuck your toes push into the hands lift the hips as high as you can and then push back so really push through your hands imagine your hands are stuck to the mat but you're really pushing back with your hips so you're just feeling lengthening through your arms through your spine through the sides of the body your tailbone is pushing towards the sky behind you or towards the upper back wall behind you if you're indoors your chest is broad the head is relaxed you're looking just in between your feet maybe in between your knees now your knees can be bent if you want to but try to maintain your back as long and as, as flat as you can so at all times in downward facing dog you're pushing through your hands and lifting and pushing back through your tailbone so downward facing dog consists 
I'd say of two parts. So you have your upper body from your wrists up to your hips and then from the hips down to your heels. And in the beginning, it can be quite difficult to form that triangle kind of shape with your mat. Maybe your back is rounding, you feel tight in your hamstrings, it's pulling at the back of your legs. Um, so simply bend the knees, then you won't have to worry about your hamstrings. And first, just learn to really open through your shoulders, find length in your spine. Once you're comfortable there, then you can uh, start working on straightening the knees. Some people also like sinking their heels down to the mat. Some people say you must do that in downward facing dog, but essentially, again, a lot depends on your anatomy. So maybe you can't bend your ankle that way. Maybe your ankle just doesn't bend that way so you can place your heel off the mat. Maybe you can't form this angle here. Maybe this is max you can do just physically, you know? So it's fine. Why would you need to worry about that if, you just, if your body just doesn't do that? You know, it's bones, you can't change that. Um, if you are a gymnast, a dancer, if you have any background as such, and it's very easy for you to get into the pose, you feel very flexible. Then sometimes what tends to happen, because you're so open in your shoulders, your spine, you start to arch your back. And it does feel comfortable just to kind of collapse here. You don't want to do it that much. So you want to engage in your core. So your back is flat. It's not arching. It's not rounding. You want your back long and flat. So you're constantly engaged. Your quads, once you get your knees straight, your quads will engage, then they're pushing back at all times. You're using your muscles. So it might sound like, you know, whenever you get comfortable into that pose, start making it uncomfortable again. And yes, this is exactly what I mean, because we, want, we constantly want to challenge ourselves work on our strength all right now let's put all three poses in a flow let's start with modified version of everything so we will go into chaturanga from knees into bhujangasana which is cobra pose instead of urdhva mukha svanasana which is upward facing dog and then we'll go into downward facing dog which is not modified so from your knees wrists hip distance apart take a deep breath in now shift the weight forward so your shoulders are going over the wrists deep breath in exhale elbows touching the sides of the body inhale slide the chest forward hips down lift the chest just as much as you want chest is moving forward and up shoulders are rolling back exhale tuck the toes lift the hips up and back downward facing dog a couple of deep breaths here. Ujjayi breaths. And now again, inhale, shift your weight forward to plank. Lower the knees down. Exhale, bend the elbows, chaturanga. Inhale, bhujangasana. Exhale, downward facing dog. Now let's do version number two. Inhale, shift your weight forward, plank. Exhale, bend the elbows, chaturanga. Inhale, untuck the toes, your thighs and knees stay lifted, rolling the shoulders back, upward facing dog. Exhale, roll over the toes, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Inhale, shift your weight forward to plank. Exhale, bend the elbows. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. Good job, lower the knees down. And that's all I wanted to show you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you got all the way through this video, that's amazing. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you got something out of it. If you do have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. It will help me grow and also you'll get an answer to your question, hopefully, if I do know it. Um, also, I'm thinking 
about making this beginner yoga thing a serious so if you'd be interested in that thumbs up and as well let me know in the comments below uh, please subscribe if you haven't yet and i'll see you next time bye bye